Hey everybody, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley412, and today we're looking at this uh, MLB main slate for Sunday. It is NFL Week 1. Super exciting. Love the NFL. Um, it reigns supreme in terms of DFS and sports, all that good stuff um, in America. So it's unsure moving forward if we are going to be continuing these MLB previews on Sundays. Uh, we'll still have them every day the rest of the week. Uh, but Sundays, I know last year we did stop it because we were getting probably like 20% of the views that we were, uh, if not 10%. So we'll see how this one does. And uh, if it kind of bombs out, we will probably just uh, scrap the Sunday uh, main slate preview videos for MLB. But we have this one here. It's a good one, uh, in my opinion. But there is some weather that we do have to pay paying attention to, to some pretty important teams and pitchers as well, which kind of stinks. So I pulled them up here. Orange, um, orange is like the heavier rain threats. Like it would not shock me if there was a postponement thrown in here at some point today. Um, the yellow, a little bit more of a rain threat. Uh, it's going to be in the area, but it could be okay. But still, it's definitely something you have to be paying attention to, especially with pitchers. So it's all on the East Coast. It's the Philadelphia game uh, going up against Washington. It's the Yankee game going up against Tampa Bay and the Boston Baltimore matchup. So Aaron Nola, I mean, he'd be the top pitcher on the slate going up against Washington, but still a major, major rain risk. So you're going to have to check the radar right before lock just to kind of see if this is something that you want, do want to play or fade completely. Um, it's not looking too great uh, time of recording this, um, but who knows? We'll see. So after Nola, Brandon Woodruff, he's probably going to be my favorite pitcher on the slate. 9.6K uh, going up against Cincinnati. You know, he's got a solid strikeout rate. We love Woodruff. He's got a solid strikeout rate. He's got a nice floor to go with him. He goes deep into games. He kind of limits uh, the walks. His one big thing is, you know, he can allow quite a few home runs, especially as of late. But it's Cincinnati. They don't have a whole lot of uh, home run threat that I'm super scared about. So I do think that Woodruff, with the $700 uh, savings um, from Bieber, I think Woodruff would probably be my favorite pitcher uh, after Nola. Singer, I have him ranked a little bit above Bieber. You could even put Bieber ahead of Singer if you really wanted to. Uh, but Singer is just so much cheaper than him. He's 1600 cheaper, and he's got Detroit, and he's a right-hander. We love right-handers going up against Detroit. They just have fantastic strikeout rates. Um, yeah, and it, it just shut down Detroit. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, but Singer, I think he's in for a prime spot. Two kind of iffy games his last time out. White Sox, Cleveland, much better offenses uh, than he is than going up against Detroit. Uh, he's faced them twice so far this season, allowed three runs in 11 innings, good for 20 DK points. So I think at 8.7K, if you can get 20 DK points, paid off salary. Easy peasy, just like that. Um, whereas Bieber, for him to pay off salary, he's probably going to be looking towards like he needs like a 26, 27 point uh, game outing, which he is totally capable of. He is, you know, shut down some. Uh, teams in the past here, Kansas City, meh, Baltimore, okay, Seattle, you know, not terrible. Um, but Minnesota, you know, they're kind of right in the same line as all of them. But so I think Bieber, the price tag, especially with like the bats that we want to throw in, there's not a whole lot of like cheapness that I really like. Um, I guess you could go Bieber as your SP2, or you could go Singer. I still haven't determined myself. I'm still kind of building, still kind of researching as I go on throughout the morning here. Um, but Bieber's probably good, or Woodruff's probably going to be one. Um, and then it could be either Bieber or it could be Singer. Uh, and Perez, you know, he's got a tough matchup going up in Strano, but he's had a nice uh, little run as of late. In the mid tier, uh, Garcia, he's kind of the one guy that just stands out from everybody else. Uh, Garcia's 8.1K. He's just got a great matchup going up against the Angels. We love everybody going up against the Angels. Uh, he's not going to be throwing up like a 30 DK point, like super ceiling game or anything. Uh, but, you know, he's just a solid pitcher in general. Had a little bit of a weak run here in August. But last time out, he went up against this exact same Angels team. Seven innings pitched, one earned run, seven Ks. You're going to be paying up for that. Or you're going to be okay with paying for that um, every time. So I do like Garcia. He's kind of the one that really stands out in this mid-tier at 8.1K. And then kind of like take a big drop off, in my opinion. Um, and then it is Walker and then Quintana. I'm not super excited about either of these guys. I think Walker's more of a GPP or bust kind of guy. Um, I would not be playing him in cash games at all. Same with Quintana. No, thank you. In the cash games, just GPP. 
even though they both have favorable matchups, they've both shown that they can absolutely bomb out um, in really any given slate. Patino and uh, Herman, just big rain threats. So I still don't really have any interest, both going up against tougher offenses, both, you know, not super high strikeout guys, both with rain threats. I just don't really have too much interest in them. Going into the cheap tier, our, my top two favorite uh, cheap pitchers are both also in rain games uh, that we do have to be paying attention to, Bradish and Hill. You could, uh, who do I have? I have Hill over Bradish. You could put Bradish over Hill. I mean, these guys are really interchangeable. Uh, they have near identical walk rates and near identical strikeout rates. Uh, the offenses that they're facing are, I mean, at this point in time, pretty near identical in terms of, you know, power and ability. So I think that they're just like 1A, 1B. There's really not much separating outside of them. Uh, not much separating them. After that, it's just pretty ugly. I'm not going to be playing Sanchez at all. Done. I love Milwaukee bats, so I'm not going to be playing him. Uh, Davidson, no thank you against Houston. And just kind of on down the list. So don't really have too much interest in ever, anybody else. So I'm really going to be sticking up with these top guys, uh, these top four pitchers and Garcia, top five guys, I guess it would be. Um, and just kind of building around them. So I don't really have really any interest at all, especially in cash. Uh, going cheaper in my lineups. So Woodruff Bieber, say you do the two most expensive. We'll do that just for, for talking points. Um, two most expensive, Woodruff and Bieber. Can we build a nice lineup with them? Philadelphia, if there's no rain threat, I think they're a top, they're a top option on the slate today. Um, but it would not shock me if this game gets postponed. Um, I'm kind of honestly hoping it does. Uh, just make my decision easier, or I can just say Milwaukee is the top uh, play on the slate today. Um, so, but Philadelphia, even if they don't postpone, like it could, it could just be ugly, ugly hitting weather. They play through some drizzle, just not good for the ball. Um, so yeah, so maybe we'll just say Milwaukee is your number one play on the slate today. And so let's do a little bit of a Milwaukee stack with Woodruff Bieber. It's going to be Tellez, Yelich, um, Rantro's got some fantastic numbers. Long, he's super cheap. I mean, 3.9 K, nice lefty righty matchup going up against Dunn. I think Long might be one of my favorite, uh, Hmm, not the favorite, but a top uh, point per dollar play on this slate today. So you throw in Milwaukee, just a mini small stack, 3.3K remaining. It gets real tight. You want to throw in another one of the top guys like Renfro, 2.8K. It gets super tight. And that's kind of why I'm kind of off Bieber, and I do kind of want to go a little bit more down uh, towards a guy like Singer, or even a guy like uh, Luis Garcia at 8.1K. It just opens everything back up, 3.4K. You throw in, go over to the cheap column, Kansas City. Their top three guys are super expensive. They're like 5K and more. But after that, they are a super cheap lineup. So let's go over to Kansas City here. It's going up against Detroit and Alexander. Alexander doesn't scare you. Detroit bullpen shouldn't scare you at all. If anything, it makes you want to play them. Um, but outside of Whit Paris Melendez, 2, 8 and below for everybody else. So you could throw in Dozier at 2.7K, Taylor at 2.6K. Those are guys who are going to be batting like 5, 6 in the lineup. Sub 3K on a team with an implied run, run total, I think close to like four and a half, not a bad option at all. So maybe you throw in one of these guys, 3.6K remaining for everything else. At, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Pasquatino, 2.2K. He's first base eligible though, so I don't really want to pay him over Tellez. Uh, I'd rather go Tellez for sure. Um, and you'll kind of see as we talk a little bit, there's a lot of first basemen Um just jump into it. There's a lot of first basemen that I do like today, um, especially in like the cheaper range. Uh, but Josh Naylor for Cleveland going up against Winder. Love lefties um, and Naylor against Win Winder there. Tell us for sure he's first base guy that I'd be having a lot of interest in. Um, and then I mentioned uh, Pascatino. Obviously, uh, he's in there. But then just like a lot of these top guys, like Goldschmidt going up against Keller. Like that just seems like he's going to, hit two home runs today uh 6.3k a little bit pricey um but yeah i mean you can kind of see it low or low however you pronounce it uh 4.2k i love him as well going up against richards but richards is just a opener uh you'll have to see uh what goes on from there but i don't mind him but still i think a healthy milwaukee stack is definitely possible and probably a route that i would be going if you want to throw in some houston guys in there as well don't mind that at all uh, Houston is just pretty expensive. Even when you get into the bottom of their lineup, they're still like priced 4K. Guriel, he was the other guy. I was like, okay, he's going to tell. I was kind of stumbling trying to find the other guy I was going to talk about. Guriel, 3.2K. Um, but again, I, I like Tellus over um, all those guys. But 
So say you don't go Milwaukee, maybe you want to go a little bit different. Maybe you can go um, St. Louis. I think St. Louis, uh, I think Houston, sorry. But St. Louis, favorite GPP play. Uh, GPP because they are just so dang expensive. Um, let me go over to St. Louis. I already talked about Goldschmidt, how I think he's just going to be an absolute smash spot. But man, 6.3K is pretty expensive for us to be paying for him. Um, everybody else, I mean... <laughs> They're solid. Arenado, righty, righty, 6.1K. Do you want to pay for it? Eh, not too much. Um, but they do have a lot of cheaper options that you could be going with. You know, Dickerson's uh, 2.8, Newt Bar for sure. Donovan, I think he's pretty cheap at 3.2. Um, so maybe, you know, the more I talk about it, maybe St. Louis isn't uh, so much of a GPP. I just figured they won't get too much ownership just because of how expensive, you know, their top guys were. Uh, but maybe I want to throw them over, you know, into this top tier and put Houston more into the GPP. Because Houston doesn't really have the value guys um, outside of Guriel that St. Louis does with Donovan and Newt Barr and Dickerson. So, you know what? I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to throw uh, St. Louis into the top um, right behind Milwaukee. Now I'm going to throw Houston more into the GPP play. Um, but, yeah, I know this, this uh, video was kind of scrambled. I'm running short on time this morning. Um, I also just kind of woke up. Thank you, Spentel. Uh, kids were up all night, uh, so I didn't sleep well. Um and yeah, not a great start to be heading into week one of the NFL, as well as uh, just another fantastic baseball slate with a lot of rain that we have to be paying attention to with decisions. But this kind of wraps things up. Uh, pitcher, I'm just sticking up to the top five. Woodruff, down to Garcia. Milwaukee's top dog. I think St. Louis is going to be right behind them. Houston, probably my favorite GPV play. I do like the Cleveland Bats. Um, and oh, man, I'm, I'm showing here. Going up against Winder in Minnesota. Um, Mets, I think they're interesting GPP just of what they're capable of doing. Uh, they are going up against the lefty, so that does, you know, um, draw me off of them a little bit. They're more designed for a right-handed pitching. Um, so, you know, like with all their strong left-handed bats and the switch hitters that they have. Um, but so I think the Mets, you know, they're more than capable of throwing up 10-plus runs. They just did it last night. They could probably easily do it again this afternoon. Um, so, yeah, so that kind of covers everything. Hopefully this guy's in the right direction. Um, and yeah, uh, good luck in your contests. Good luck in your NFL contests as well. Um, and we will see you in the next video.